Hello and welcome, we're at the track with the Sport of Kings. Coming up, the reigning champion apprentice in Jamaica, Abran White, scores a good win in the feature event at Caymanus Park. Fit again, Rajiv Miraj has a huge added money success in Kentucky, USA. And we talk to the irrepressible Patrick Bommel Husbands after the Barbadian is named Canada's Jockey of the Year for a record eighth time. No racing in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago this past weekend. Let's head first to Caymanus Park in Jamaica. The overnight allowance mile event for three-year-olds, the main event with seven starters after a couple of late scratches. The leading contenders, number three, Raging Prospect at three to one. Third best supported in the betting. Military move, number seven, the favorite at four to five. With Jamaica's all-time leading jockey, Winston Griffiths at 56 years old, in the saddle. And there's also the 2014 Derby winner, Relampago, with champion jockey, Dane Nelson up, the two to one second favorite. Bran Rickman picks up the commentary. Locked and loaded, attempting to go all the way with the advantage. Raging Prospect and a military move, the closest pursuers. Western Rose hugs the rail run and saves ground as Locked and Loaded is first into the lane at the top of it. Here's Raging Prospect now asked to deliver a challenge. Military move toward the outside of horses. Relampago has made steady progress and now looks a threat as they run toward the furlong pole. Raging Prospect just the leader. Locked and loaded on the rail. Relampago and a military move in close proximity. Western Rose left out of it, but it is Raging Prospect holding on to the advantage. Military move trying to cut into it. Raging Prospect by a length on the tail. Military move closing, but too late. Champion apprentice of Bran White rides a smart race and gets the win at 3 to 1 odds, fighting off the favorite military move. 1 minute 39.20 seconds, the winning time over 8 furlongs for trainer Fitzroy Glispie, who part owns the 6 year old gelding with Hayden Thomas, raging prospect bred by the Orange Valley Estates. Now, the outstanding Barbadian jockey Patrick Husbands was winless on his Easter trip to Jamaica, but the smiles returned for him at his base in Toronto. Yes, at the glittering Sovereign Awards in Ontario, honoring Canada's top performers for 2014, Husbands predictably copped the outstanding jockey award for the eighth time. His longtime associate, Mark Cassie, was just as much a shoe in for the Trainers' Award. Husbands, as Woodbine champion jockey, picked up 145 votes to be easily number one for the top prize, ahead of the throne champion rider Luis Contreras with 48 votes. Another Barbadian, Rico Walcott, who dominated at Northlands Park in Edmonton, secured 24 votes to be fourth of the finalists for the award. Rebounding from a treacherous 2013 season when multiple leg fractures in a race fall forced him out of the saddle for almost five months, Husbands in 2014 had one of his best ever seasons that included a rich Queen Spade win aboard Horse of the Year Lexi Lou. No jockey in Canadian racing history has as many sovereign awards as he has. With a steel rod inserted in corrective surgery for his leg fracture in May 2013, Husbands often endured nagging pain as he totaled 170 victories at Toronto's Woodbine Racetrack in 2014. A whopping 27 of those added money wins for overall mounts earnings in the year of 10.6 million Canadian dollars, the second highest in his Toronto career. And in this telephone interview, Husbands first says how pleased he is to be copying his first sovereign award since 2009. Yeah, you know, it was so long, but it was it was so long to get back on top just to get a sovereign award. And you know, um, unfortunately, in 2013, when when we come out there um, the summer, I was leading in everything, and they got hurt, and and, and I was sitting on so many good horses, and that was that was to me, I feel that was my biggest year since I was being in Canada to when I got hurt. But um, I went off for the season on the first time, and um, I got hurt in 20 years, and you know, I. I I never been out of horse racing for so long, and it was it was it was it was devastating. But um, to come back and show the people that I'm still into the game, and you know, people can say you're too old now and this and that, and take the negatives away from the owners and the trainers and the punters, and come back to show them that I can still do just as good or better any any other rider. I say to all my fans and all my supporters, and it's a great feeling, you know, the hard work pay off, and I'm very happy. Um, during the Canada winter break, you rode in Barbados, you rode in Trinidad, you rode in Jamaica. How are you physically entering the 2015 season in, in Toronto? Yeah, yeah um, actually, you know, I was trying to show the respect in terms of, you know, I was, I was riding in North American based trade for, the, la for the, um, the winter break. For the last 20 years, I, I wasn't competing at all in the Caribbean, you know. So I was just competing in California, Miami, New Orleans, all over. Tampa, all over, and um, I decided, you know, let, let me just let my foot heal in terms of the steel, 
So I, I take that four months off, and I say the last month of racing, I would just travel to the Caribbean, just to take some sour faces off of a lot of people, you know what I mean? And it was good. It was good and it was good and proud returning back to Jamaica after 20 somebody years, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, that's the only race track that I participated in horses and showed the whole world. I never won a race, so you know, I can't wait to get back there now. <laughs> okay, you had a couple of wins on the season opening weekend at Woodbine in Toronto this past weekend. Uh, what are your targets for 2015? You know, my target is just like any other rider, you know, to win, to win, a, win, win majority of the races that you ride, you know. You lose more than you win, but my target this year, you know, I would like to win back the Sovereigns Award, I would like to win back the championship, and anything fall in line from there, Lance, I have no choice, I'd like to take it. Okay. Now, you'll be 42 years old next month, uh, Patrick, and for a few years now, you've been hinting that retirement may not be too far off for you. Now, you've just completed one of your best seasons ever. Why would you think of quitting at this stage? You know, uh, Lance, uh, coming off of this big injury, um, actually, when I, when I broke my leg, when the doctor see the x-rays, he, he said, Mr. Husband, I got some good news and some bad news. He said, if you was a racehorse, we would have to put you down. And the good news I got for you, we could repair you, but we can't take the steel back out. You know what I mean? Eh? So, um, coming back off of the injury, you know, uh, and with a lot of aches and pains, and then the end of the year, a lot of aches and pains, and then the following year, a lot of aches and pains. So it was, it was bringing my career to, to a limit that uh, only negative above it, you know. But um, taking the winter off now, Lance, I got to play it by year and see how it goes. But if we have a fantastic year, we'll always look forward to keep having a fantastic year and take, take my mind away from return. Also on the Sovereign Awards, a strong showing by the Barbadian Demario Bino, a nephew of Patrick Husband's, as a finalist for the top apprentice of the year, he picked up 56 votes to be the runner-up for the award won by Sheena Rand. Now before we go, let's head to the Keeneland Racetrack in Kentucky, USA, where the Jamaican jockey Rajiv Mirage scored the biggest win since his return from a four-month layoff with a broken arm. He is a stride Miss Ella on the backstretch in the Bowman Stakes. Miss Ella tries to pick up the leaders in third on the outside. Then Sweet Success is fourth. Seven is fifth. Delightful Joy being pushed along now and is still next to last coming to the quarter pole. A good seven lengths off the lead. Harlan's Destiny is the trailer top of the stretch. Fantastic style short lead. Miss Ella on the outside. Divine Dawn fights on third down toward the inside. And Delightful Joy still has a long way to come from the back of the pack. Here's Miss Ella. Again to challenge for the lead past the eighth pole. Divine Dawn is very game. Fantastic style is there. Final furlong of the Adina Springs Beaumont. Miss Ella with the lead to the 16th pole. Miss Ella for the upset for Rajiv Mirage. Divine Dawn was home second. Rajiv Mirage confident in the saddle and fairly easily fends off the sustained deep stretch challenge from Divine Dawn as Miss Ella gets the surprise win at odds of 10 to 1. Stopping the clock at 128.11 for seven furlongs, Miss Ella wins by two and a half lengths with trainer Graham Motion. We've been at the track covering top stories in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.